Hey guys, have you seen these lock boxes on the front of people's houses? Um, I've seen a few lately and I, I was kind of curious about them. Um, so I bought this. This is a Brinks lock box, uh, the extra large version. Uh, you can put a whole bunch of keys and credit cards and you can probably even fit your wallet in there if you wanted to. And they say on the back it's to give you, you know, great flexibility in your life while giving you peace of mind. And, I, I bought it, trying to figure out how much peace of mind it would give me, knowing that a box is on the front of my house and it contained my key, you know, in case my kids lost theirs, they'd have this as a backup. I don't think it would give me too much peace of mind. Um, it has a neat little weather cover on the front. Um, on the back it's padded, and that's designed not to damage your house, but, you know, I've looked at this uh, a while ago, and you actually have to drill some holes in your house to mount it flush against your wall. Near, wherever you want to, it doesn't have to be near your entrance. Uh, in order to get in, you have to have a combination, and then of course you pull it open. And I, I've set this combination to uh, 2012 this year, and so it pops open. And inside come all the mounting screws, and then uh, little else except the locking mechanism. And the locking mechanism is held in by four little Phillips head screws. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just take it apart and get a look at the mechanism, and then we can figure out how we can beat it. Usually these are pretty weak, but uh, realtors don't use these. This is not a realtor lock. Realtors today are use pretty high technology stuff. They've moved into Abloy and Medico, and a lot of them are even using electromagnetic locks that are actually in encrypted. They send encrypted radio signals so they can track which realtor went in at what time and so forth. Okay, let's see if I can get that off. And you can see the mechanism. We have the locking bar which hooks into these pawls on the door and uh, I'll pull that out. I'll just pull the whole lock out and you can see that uh, what we're looking at, I really don't need that any right now, uh, the combination mechanism and then this is the locking bar. When it falls down into its lower position, we have 2012 still dialed in, so this locking bar falls down into a slot that's machined into the bottom of the box. So the locking pawl falls down there and it allows the bar then to these little locking pawls to move and of course the door will open. So when you change the combination and I'll just change one number the, you'll see that that little bar moves. I'll, I'll try to dial it back here. Watch that little bar on top and when you dial the combination it moves forward into that little depression. So what we need uh, to do is from the outside we need to figure out how to get access, how to make that little bar go in the right position. Well, in the wheels, this is resettable by the way, you can change the combination on this to anything you want. So picking it, uh, you know, there are 10,000 possible combinations with four digits and so you could be there for quite a while if you're going to just do it randomly or try to do it sequentially. But if you look closely at the side you'll see a small plastic wheel. And that wheel is actually what lines up with these locking bars. There are four of them that lock up. One, two, three, four. And each of those rests on that plastic wheel. So from the outside, if there's some way we can figure out where the notch is, and let me turn this so you can see it. And you see there's a little notch right here that the locking bar falls into when it's around the back and it's in the right position. So from the front, if we can somehow reach in through, this, through the little slot, find that slot, determine when it's in the front, well then we know that we need to add a certain number to it to rotate it around the back, and that will mean that it's going to lock. Now looking at this, you can see that the combination is 2, and when the notch is on the front it's a 7, so the difference uh, is 5. So if we were to sense this notch from the front, and it happens to be on 7, we simply add 5 or subtract 5 and that would take us to the, that would put the notch in the correct position. So in this case uh, take 5 from 7 it's going to give us 2. So there we go 2. And that holds true exact there's notches exactly the same on these others. They're just difficult to see because they're down inside of that crack but this one is the easiest for me to demonstrate. So let's dial in. We have the right combination. Let's reassemble this thing and check our theory. Okay. So I'm just going to put it right back in its little slot. Get in there. I'm going to take the locking pawls and put them back in where they belong. Otherwise, this is a wasted exercise.
Okay, that's everything's in place. I'm going to take the plate, put it back in place. And in the interest of saving time, I know you don't like what, all you guys stand around watching me screw. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put two of these Phillips screws back in just to hold that plate securely in place while we run our experiment. Two should be plenty because I doubt we're ever going to use this thing. Okay, so we're on the front now. Everything's in place. We're going to change our combination to whatever. And now you can see it is locked, so the thing does work. Now what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to turn this sideways. And the way that we find that is we take a feeler gauge. This, this is a, more, it's what Peterson calls a knife, but any feeler gauge will do. And we're simply going to put it down in each of these notches, there's plenty of room to get it in there, and we're going to find that little notch. So I'll put it in, I don't find the notch, so I'll turn it one number. Turn, don't find the number, keep going, don't find it. And when I get to seven, the knife goes in much further, and I don't, not only that, but I can actually feel the little depression, the whole depression, I can determine the dimensions of it. So now I know for sure that I'm there. Well, let's do the second one as well. I don't feel any notch. Turn one number. I don't feel a notch. No notch. And all of a sudden it goes down in much deeper and I can find that notch. Okay, so we've got that one. Let's try the next one. You get the idea. I think I'm boring you at this point and I'm sorry. But I've got to find the notch. I can't remember the damn number. <laughs> There we go. And then the last one, no notch. And it feels like it right there. So what do we have? Well, we've got seven, five, six, seven. Well, now we know all of our notches are aligned on the front. And we already determined that the difference is five, so we could simply add or subtract five from each of these and we get the number. But a lot of these boxes are different. And we don't always have the luxury of disassembling it. So if you run across a box like that and you're still able to decode or find the notch on the front with your with your knife all you really do is you just go one at a time I would rotate so instead I would go eight oops eight six seven eight and then I would try it and so forth I go nine seven eight nine nine, try it, and so forth. And you rotate it around until you get to the five. And in this case, let me rotate it, the original number was, see if I can remember, seven, five, six, seven, I believe. So we, we should subtract five, so it's gonna be two. Subtract five from five is zero. Subtract five from six gives us one. Subtract 5 from 7 gives us 2, and should open, voila. So, I am absolutely, I get no sense of comfort. I get, it doesn't actually give me any flexibility or peace of mind, using their words, knowing that my key is secured in this box so that my kids can find it. It just, uh, in fact, it throws me into panic to even think that people would use a box with this low security. So if you have one, I advise you to take another look at it. By the way, this comes in two forms. One you can bolt on your door, and there's another that has actually a hasp that I suppose you can lock on your doorknob or lock, you know, somewhere on your fence. But it's the same mechanism. So, again, make your own call, but you won't find one of these on my house. Anyway, thanks for your time. Thanks for your patience. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.